Boyumba thinks it's in. Has it been given? It has! This is extremely close. Can you definitively say that this doesn't cross the line? Welcome to Instant Replay for MLS Match Day 32. I'm your host, Andrew Wiebe, and as always, we're taking a closer look at the most controversial refereeing decisions in Major League Soccer. 11 plays to come, but first, a little bit of history. Congratulations to Natalie Simon, the first black woman to referee a match in Major League Soccer. All right, to Atlanta we go, enter Miami in town, but of course, Lionel Messi watching from home. But you knew that. Let's go to the 29th minute. Tristan Muyumba. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking, you're thinking it would be nice if orange cards existed because Tristan Muyumba is straddling the line between reckless and excessive force. I'm with Marufo on this one. It's a yellow card in my opinion, and here's why. For me, it's more reckless acting with disregard to the danger to or consequences for than excessive force. The reason being, the contact occurs with that left foot of Moyumba, which is tucked in and right along the ground. There's no studs exposed, no foot extended. Yes, that didn't feel good for Benjamin Kramaski, but I don't think it necessitates a sending off. However, if it would have been the right leg, which you see extended with studs exposed, contacting Kramaski, I would be all over the ejection. To the 36th minute we go, and Tristan Mayumba is in the headlines once again. This time, it's a beautiful flicked header across the line that spins off the post. A little bit of English, sort of like a pool ball. And according to the AR, goes over the line. Goal is awarded. I'm not going to profess to have any certainty here. I do not know if this ball crosses the line. Watching the replays, it seems to me, based on the body positioning of Drake Callender, the goalkeeper, that it's possible that it did not entirely cross the line. But possible is not clear and obvious. Without a smoking gun angle, there is no way the VAR Edwin Juricevic is going to wade in on this one. Whatever the call on the field is going to stand. Therefore, it's a goal. All right, first handball of the show, 52nd minute. Luis Abram blocks a shot with his left arm. The ball deflects off that arm and hits the outstretched right. Now, initially, when you watch this, you're probably saying, hold on, that left arm is tucked in. That's a natural position. No handball, right? Because it deflected? Well, there's nothing about deflections in the laws. It basically says, if your arm is in a natural position and the ball hits it in the box, you take the risk and the punishment. Therefore, when it deflects off Abram's left arm and hits his outstretched right, it is a handball. Marufo and crew got this one right, in my opinion. There's a little more gray area, though, in the 63rd minute. Sergio Busquets diving in on Sean De Silva. No penalty called, but we all see that knee-to-knee -knee contact, right? For me, this is a foul and a penalty. Busquets dives across and initiates the contact. But I can understand why Juricevic, the VAR, did not recommend review. Watch Silva's feet closely before the contact occurs from Busquets. He seems to run his foot into the back of his heel. Perhaps that's what took him down. In addition, he pulls up the landing gear and really overemphasizes the contact and his reaction to it, putting a little bit of doubt in the referee's mind, both on the field and in the booth, about what caused this contact and whether he's looking for it. So while I think penalty, I understand why it wasn't reviewed. This potential handball in Charlotte, D.C. did get reviewed. Carol Ann Chouinard sent this down to referee John Freeman after Donovan Pines blocked the shot and the ball clearly hits his outstretched arm. Freeman went to the monitor and stuck with the call on the field, which was no penalty. And I gotta say, I disagree with that decision. It goes back to what we were talking about with Abram. When you put your arm in an unnatural position, you take the risk, unless it is a deliberate play. Blocking the ball is not considered deliberate. Had Pines cleared the ball or passed the ball off his own arm, that would be considered a deliberate play. For me, the law and interpretation is clear here. This should have been, in my opinion, a handball and a penalty. I've also got penalty in the Hudson River Derby. and Santi Rodriguez gets the touch. The Red Bulls defender doesn't get the ball and obstructs his run. On first look live, I was thinking, okay, no penalty. Santi just jumps into him and the Red Bulls defender is shielding. No big deal, right? But when you see the close-up from behind the inline, you can see that this is not a natural standing position. The Red Bulls defender lunges out, extends the leg, and that is what creates the contact. For me, 
That is a penalty. It wasn't called on the field by Joe Dickerson, and no review was initiated by Drew Fisher. All right, a couple obvious ones from Ismail Alfath, who had a pretty hectic match between Philly and Cincy. 33rd minute, Roman Celentano's coming out on Daniel Gazdog, and he's fouling Gazdog. We can all see the contact. That's pretty obvious. Penalty, and Gazdog, as he always does, finishes to make it 2-0 Philly. But then the game changed. It's 2-2. Jerson Mosquera is defending in the 83rd minute, and he has nothing to complain about here for his second yellow. Look at that contact and the way he comes in on this play. The speed, the force, the studs of the foot, that is textbook caution. And this is a caution too on Jack Elliott in the 94th minute to get sent off for his second yellow as well. I think Brandon Vasquez suckers him into it. Vasquez feels the contact, the grab on the shoulder, the little push behind, and he goes down. But Elliott just has to be smarter here. Two more to go, and we'll make them as quick as we can. Montreal, Chicago, 12th minute. Matthew Schwanier with a horror tackle on Kai Kamara. Referee Mark Allerton says yellow card, and there's no review initiated by Kevin Stott. But folks, for me, that is a red card. You have excessive force from Schwanier with the speed coming in, the jump with two feet, the studs into the ankle with force. That's endangering the safety of the opponent, in my opinion. I think Schwanier should have been sent off. And I agree with Adrian Heath that Andreu Fontas should have been sent off for a second yellow as well in the Minnesota Sporting Kansas City match. Emmanuel Reynoso beats Fontas. Fontas wraps his arm around him and stops a promising attack. I was surprised no foul was called, and if there's a foul, it's certainly a yellow card. Tori Pinso, the referee, is trailing the play, but our AR, Corey Richardson, is in perfect position to see this grab, raise his flag, and recommend the call to Pinso. Here's what I think. That's not the most aggressive grab I've ever seen. And clearly, Reynoso's looking for it a little bit. So perhaps Richardson said to himself, that's not enough contact for me. I'll leave it to the referee, play on. In the end, Minnesota complained because a minute or so later, Sporting Kansas City scored the game-winning goal. But come on, loons, you can't blame your bad defending on a missed call at the other end of the field, even if I do agree with you. All right, that's it for us. Congratulations go out to Corey Rockwell for setting a record for assistant referee appearances in Major League Soccer and to Jerry Marufo for hitting his 300th game. Huge accomplishments, guys. Congratulations. And big thanks to my producer, Rich Hernandez, as always, and my editor, Phil Lavanka, who makes me look as smart as I possibly can. I'm Andrew Weeby. We'll see you next time.